So just to go over one more time, my name is Michael and I'm at NWA3D. And so you guys have purchased the A31 printer from us. And so today we're gonna to kind of talk about the four steps that we need to go through to print. So the first one, of course, we like to advertise is to design or make something. And that's just because that's what we prefer to do and we want it to be an educational thing for people. And as I'm sure as you guys do as well, since you are at a science museum. Um, so that's what we really like to push towards. And it's awesome to see three-dimensional prints but it's not as often if you didn't make them yourself. And that's just because you can take a lot more pride in something you do. Um, so we do have a couple design videos and we have some recommendation if you guys are looking for that. Otherwise, I'll go ahead and step right into the program. Um, I think we're good on, we use Tinkercad for kids to work with and they yeah. seem to get it reasonably well pretty quickly. And uh, it's actually one of our recommendations and we really enjoy it. It's pretty simple to use, pretty simple to look at, and that's very key with these kind of students that are going into it. So you don't want to make it overwhelming to them, and Tinkercad is like drag and drop shapes, and it makes it a lot easier. So. Right. We had a kid, uh, like within two hours, he, he figured out how to build the Starship Enterprise. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, of course. That, that, that figure. They, they're capable of amazing things. So, all right. Next, what we're gonna cover is Cura, or C-U-R-A, so Cura, and that's the slicing software that prepares it for the printer. So as you know, Idea Maker that we utilize with the Race 3D is pretty much the same thing. It does all of the same stuff, just with maybe Cura has a little bit more settings for you to play with. Um, okay. I'm gonna talk based on right now. So you guys should have an S a USB with a micro SD card in the back of it, is that true? Uh, yeah, but we already had Cura pre-installed for the A5s. Okay, which Cura do you have installed? Uh, 15.46? Hold on. 15.04.5. Okay, cool. That'll work great. So, let's go ahead and open up Cura. Yep, got it open. And I'm gonna go ahead and swap my screen over. So whenever I swap my screen, it's probably gonna maximize my, my screen on your computer. If you wanna minimize it, just hit escape. Okay. There we go. So now you can also see my Cura and we can step through the process of setting up a new machine and adding the A31 to our repertoire of printers. All right. Awesome. You probably have the same view as me right now because you guys have set up an A5 previously. Um, Settings on the left hand side are going to be familiar and what we're going to do now is just click on machine and click add new machine. So it's going to pull us out of there and start the configuration wizard. We're going to go through the same steps as the A5. So go ahead and click next and select other. Next one more time and then we're selecting Mendel, M-E-N-D-E-L. Okay. Click next and finish finally. Okay. So next it pulls us back into the build area. And of course we have some things to change on the left hand side, but first what I want us to take a look at is changing the machine settings themselves. So go ahead and machine one more time and then choose machine settings a little bit lower. Yep. Okay. Now we're gonna change the width, depth, and height. And it's going to be 300 by 300 by 400. 300 by what? 300 by 400. And as a rough estimate, that's about 12 by 12 by 16 inches tall. Okay. We want to make sure that heated bed is on because this does have a heated build plate so that we can print larger surfaces. Okay. And we should be able to click OK. You may want to change your machine name to A31 so you know what it is. And click OK. So now our big blue box is uh, bigger than it was. Good, so it's representing our full build size that we have on these printers. And next, all we need to do is change a couple of the variables here on the left-hand side. So the first one I like to go over is the nozzle size. The nozzle okay. size in particular is a piece of hardware on the printer, and we wanna change that to 0 0.4. Okay, so it's a four millimeter nozzle, yep. Next, we're gonna change the filament diameter, and that's going to be 1.75. And that proves true for just about all of the printers we sell. And then we can kind of work from the top down now. So layer height is going to be your representation of 
quality or how nice it looks after printing, right? And so this is really gonna determine if it's gonna look good or if it's gonna look kind of coarse or rough. So 0.1 is the highest we'd like to rank these printers at. Uh, much higher than that is often harder to achieve with Cartesian type printers. And you can all go all the way to 0 0.3, okay? Okay. 0 0.1 to 0 0.3. Now the shell thickness, if you notice, it's yellow. It's a funny color. The reason for that is it needs to be a multiple of our knowledge size. So what would be the multiple, second multiple of this? For about uh, 3.5? So it would be 0.8. So if it's a multiple of the nozzle size and the nozzle is point, oh, yeah, it's going to be pointed. I, I was thinking the filament diameter. Oh no, you're you're good. Yeah, that's so the reason that's why I was dumb the there for a second. End up being, and this is going to denote how thick our walls are. Okay, so this is basically if it makes one pass, it creates the first side of the wall, and then if it makes a second pass, it's going to be inside. And so those are each going to be 0.4 millimeters, or the same width as the nozzle. So retraction helps to make the prints look cleaner. It basically pulls the plastic out a little bit more and then pushes it back when it starts printing again. So it'd be if it was like moving from spot to spot, then it would retract a little bit so it doesn't string plastic everywhere. Next, we're gonna do bottom and top thickness. Now this isn't dependent on the nozzle. You can choose whatever you would like. I prefer to have all the walls the same width, so I'm gonna change this to zero. So if you want to increase your wall width, you're welcome to. Just make sure it's a multiple of four and you should be good. Okay. Next, we're going to have fill density, and that's the durability of the object or how strong it's going to be out, outside of it. So it, it's what supports the walls and the top and bottom on the inside of the model. Okay. So this one, we like to say anywhere from 5 to 25% is usually a good range for it. Uh, higher than 25%, we kind of see is almost like a waste of plastic unless it's supposed to be a weight dependent item, which is understandable. So if you fill it in 100%, it's going to be the exact weight that you made it at. And then the same thing as if you were to do, you know, like 50%, it's gonna be half the weight it should be. Um, so that's a good way to kind of gauge how much material you're using and what the actual weight of an item is. Just kind of a tip for you. Next, print speed, and we like to set these at 50 millimeters per second about the fastest they can go without messing the print up in some way or causing consistent issues. You could turn it up to 60, uh, but you may see some skipping and walls and it may look a little rough, even if you're printing at a nice layer. So, Next, okay. we're printing temperature, and let's change that to 220 degrees. That is our preferred value to make sure the plastic is molten and will lay down nicely. So this kind of, this value depends upon what type of plastic you are using. On these A31s, we usually use PLA, and we like to melt it at 220. You could have a different range for yourself. It's kind of up to you. Next, we're gonna have the bed temperature, and this value cannot go over 75 on the printers. We have a fail safe in the software of the printer that tells it to stop trying if it's over 75. So we give it a rough estimate of 55 degrees Fahrenheit is an excellent printing temperature for anything like PLA. Okay. So next, there's only two more values that we need to touch base on, and it's be support type. And supports are basically what helps models or pieces that are floating above the build area to be printed. And platform adhesion is exactly what it sounds like. It helps to adhere to. Okay. Do we have any further questions about either of those? Uh, which one is it? <clears throat> which one is just the two lines around it? So that is platform adhesion type, two lines around it, and this is going to be none. Okay. Considered to be is a skirt, and Cura 15.4 automatically applies a skirt. So it basically primes the nozzle and prepares it and then starts the print. If you adhere to it, we recommend only using a brim, and it's going to basically make a suction cup effect then a raft is going to be an entire area that it builds before it builds the object. So if you do want to like mount something on a platform of some kind, then a raft would be the way to go, right? Yes. It's going to be much cleaner if you have a raft underneath it, but it is going to take a considerable amount more of time. So, All right. 
Excellent. So the only thing left to do is we would need to load a file. And I know you guys are pretty good about the STL files and the G code. I so at this point, you guys are probably pretty familiar with it. So first I'm going to load and I'm going to choose an STL. And so that's what comes out of our creation process. And I'm going to go ahead and pick this gear of 50 millimeters in particular. So it's a little bit small for the build area, but it's a good example. And now I'm not going to want to print it like this. This is not an optimal way to print this object. The optimal way would be it laying flat on one of its flat sides. And it's much smoother and with a lot less time in this direction. Remember, print orientation does decide a lot. And it can also change your print time. It changed my print time by 15 minutes. All right, so you have your area correctly sliced and you're ready to go. Or if you have multiple gears, we could also do that. So you'd click load and then you'd select the files that you want to put in again. And then it'll pop both of those in there. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll leave those in there and I'll make them all. No reason why we can't. We have a big build space, right? Yep. That's what the printer's for. So I'm just rotating. So this is the rotate command here in the bottom left. Then we have the scale. If I would like to make it larger, I can. So that makes it larger and smaller. Rip either of these, or you can change it here in these values or do non-uniform. So it scales it just by lengthwise or widthwise. And then finally we can mirror it and that's basically just flipping it at 180 degrees. All right, we have any questions about that guys? No, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty self-explanatory and pretty easy. Yeah, I agree. And um, I think generally it's, you know, you're going to be caught up with everything now. So pretty much all you really needed was the settings for the A31 more than, more than anything. Great. So now we can go ahead and save that. So toolpath to SD card and mine went ahead and automatically saved to my SD card. And then all I would have to do after that is eject it and move it to my printer. So that is going to be the fourth step. Or our third step is going to be printing. So the first one was the design. The second one was Kira or slicing it and preparing it. Bring it to the printer, and the fourth one's going to be printed. So the only other thing that we might want to cover now is going to be focused on the printer itself, right? So we've kind of did the design factor, we've gone through the making it and slicing it and preparing it. Now we just need to. So we're going to go over the general recommendations of kind of troubleshooting your printer. And that's going to involve okay. the first one is going to be Cura. Of course, you want to make sure everything's selected correctly in there. We got that. We're good. I, I know you're comfortable with that. Number two, yes. what we're going to do is we're going to look at basic printer inspection. And you said you're comfortable with the mechanical aspects of it. Are there any questions you would like to ask me for step two? Or do you feel pretty safe on it? All right, so the, uh, the recommendation that they use for bed leveling is two sheets of paper. Mm -hmm. uh, does that sound about right? Yep, it is. Usually it can end up being maybe a little too far, or a little too close, and you have to do final adjustments while it prints. That's what I like to do. My preference, I eyeball. I'm so used to using these three printers at this point that I eyeball where I think it's going to be probably print pretty well, and then I schedule a print, it doesn't successfully lay down, I adjust it accordingly. So if it's stringing, then obviously it's too far away. If it is basically not coming out of the nozzle or it looks wispy on the build plate, it's too close, and it's causing pressure so it can't get out. Right. Those are the two cases that you would basically adjust for. And anything in between those two is going to squirt out plastic and it's going to lay down. Okay. Okay. If you, uh, that's really what I recommend. I like eyeballing it more than the piece of paper. The paper works great to get it to that spot really close, but you may have to do last minute adjustments as it finalizes the print. Okay. So what other kind of information do you want about that? Um, we can step through it and I'm welcome to do the paper and we can go through step by step about it and how to do that. Um, and then you guys can feel a little more comfortable and then we'll probably do the eyeball real quick and you'll see how different the kind of aspects are. So when you're doing it with the paper method, the correct amount of pressure on it is just, 
it lightly drags, right? It lightly hangs. Yes. It basically, it should feel like the paper's almost like vibrating in a way. Um, it's it's kind of like dragging or vibrating against the nozzle and you should be able to feel that when you move it in. So let's okay. flip through that process because that is step three. So step two was basically like mechanical inspection, making sure the motors are plugged in, so on and so forth, right? You guys are probably more than capable and you already have it constructed by all means, right? We did that and we already leveled it too. Sweet. Okay. So did it work with the paper? Did you try the paper level? We, uh, we did the paper level, but we haven't tried it out yet. Okay. Okay. So yeah, go ahead and schedule your print job that we just did. Then. I'm going to go ahead and try and quick level mine because mine is not even plugged in. Great. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm going to plug mine in and I'll quit hot level mine. And what I mean by hot level is I'll just level it while it prints, so while it warms up. So, of course, the first thing I'm going to want to do is I need to load my filament. So, I'm going to click on prepare or setup and then preheat PLA. So it starts making the nozzle hot so I can squish the filament through. Okay. Right. So, if you want to follow along with this process, we can get to printing pretty much as soon as possible. So go ahead and click on the button once, click on setup, and you'll see two options for preheat. Notice there's a preheat PLA and preheat soft pull. Do you know what a soft pull is? Yeah, that's what you had me do on, uh, the, uh, on the big raise. Yes, sir, that is. So the raise 3D, that was a more of a you know, kind of different scenario just because it's such a larger printer and it doesn't have a boat into it. So this one has a boat in extruder and the raise 3D has a direct drive extruder. So it's directly on top of your hot end, right? Right. We kind of take a look at it. This is going to be our hot end or where our area heats up. Oh, there we go. Oh. This is the heat up area, right? Yeah. And you know, the Race 3D has the motors and stuff to feed it through right on top of here. Right. What is so nice about this printer is that it has the Bowden tube and it's not going to create those jams or blogs that we found with the Race 3D because of that. Now it helps with the heat and it helps the heat transfer so it doesn't happen as quickly. And it also makes it to where it's a little bit smoother about feeding in filament. So it makes it a little bit more reliable. So other than that, mine is heating up. It's about at 220. What I recommend you do is cut the filament at a sharp angle before you feed it through. It makes it a little easier. Okay. So we're kind of covering All right. three and four at the same time. Which like you guys are pretty set for that. So I cut it at an angle like this. Just this oh, wow. You've got just about the same color we do. Yeah, the maroon. Oh, uh, ours, ours is purple. I see. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, mine's maroon. Sweet. So I'm going to put that back on there. So I cut it at an angle. And now I'm just going to, right here in the back, it's just like A5 load, right? So just like right. A5, you're going to have the yellow trigger back here and you're just going to squeeze the trigger and place it all the way through to the other side and all the way through the tube. And so by now it should be hot enough if we preheated it that we can squeeze the filament out immediately. Once you feel the back pressure hit, I want you to keep pushing a little bit out any old colors that it may be affected by. So this is a great method to change colors if, you know, maybe Somebody at the museum is trying to get a different color or a different print. I read pulling it out and reinserting the color and then squeezing out all of the old plastic. Right. That's just basically like a pressure squeeze. So now mine's heated up. The bed's almost at 50 and we're at 220 and it pushed out filament. So that means I don't have a clog. That's good. And now I'm going to go ahead and click on the button, click setup, and I'm going to go to auto home. I'm doing this is the first thing you want to do when you try and level your printer is you're going to auto home it, disable motors, and then check the distance all the way around the building. So it's just now hitting the bottom. Sweet. And I'm going to disable motors so I can move everything around except the Z axis because I want that to stay as as I can. So. And now I'm going to just check the distance with my eyes. 
So I'm going to look at how much of a gap do I have with this nozzle already. And so mine is looking pretty close to it already. So it's pretty much touching it right now, right? Uh, mine has a small gap. Yeah. So as long as it has a very thin gap, put it out here so you guys can see a little bit. Right now there's filament still coming out of it, but. Yeah, it'll be all right. So that's, this is what's called a hot level. So it's hot and we're leveling it and we're about to schedule the print. And so that's the idea behind it is that one thing we want to do with this type of printer is when we level it, we want to make sure the build plate is hot or it's going to be at that when it frames. Because when items cool off, they tend to change shape and they warp sometimes. So we want to make sure it's preheated before when we level it. So right now the bed is warm and it's preheated, so it should have everything worked out. And we want to make sure all the areas are the same distance or same height all the way around the build area. Yeah. A little bit close. And I'm just going to check each of the four points. So we have four corners, one here, 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 and in the back. And I'm just going to kind of go through and check each of the four corners. And mine's a little bit too close, so I'm going to turn it to the right, and it should lower the build area. Okay. The righty tidy is going to lower it. I'm going to lower it till I see a gap, and then I'm going to move to the next one. So this one's looking a little bit too close. And I got a gap. Very small gap, not much. And a gap. And finally, this back corner looks pretty good. Just maybe a little bit more. There we go. I didn't use piece of paper, I just leveled it with my eyes. And it should be decent enough for me to start a print and then see how that print works. So that's what I'm going to do now. And click on button, go down to print from SD card, and select my gear 50 millimeters that I saved. And so since my nozzle's hot, I'm going to raise my x-axis up right now so it doesn't burn my build plate. So one thing, if it is hot and it's sitting right next to this blue build area, it will burn a hole in it. So beware. So all I did was I took my right hand and I went ahead and just turned it the back spiral to the right, and it should raise up your axis. Yep. Okay. It's a good prevention. So now, right as it's finishing the last of the heating for the bed, we can kind of talk about some filament. So we kind of hot level the bed really quickly, so the paper works to get it close, and then I like to check the first layer of every print and adjust it as it needs it. So the other thing that we may want to talk about is you don't want to leave filament in the printer while it's hot and not doing anything. If it's not moving, if it's not squirting out, what's going to happen to that plastic that's sitting in this 220 degree area? It's going to, it's going to melt into it and, and it's going to mold hot. to it. Yeah, it's going to become like a baked piece of bread. And that baked piece of bread is going to turn black. And it's going to be really hard to get out of that pan. That's what happens and that's a very hard carbon clog is what it's called. So we want to avoid that. So if it's sitting around and you see it on, it might be hot or something, I would immediately turn it off unless you're scheduling a print then. Okay. All right. So, so is we can push it starting up. What's up? The print that we scheduled is starting up. Okay, good. So watch that first layer and watch and see if the plastic lays down. And if the plastic seems like it's not, Move the build plate up by going to the left. If you can't see any filament coming out, and it looks like the nozzle is shoved up against the build area, twist the knobs to the right. All right, so it looks like it's, uh, it looks like it's not quite close enough on the front side for us. So you want us to... Yep, do it right now. Don't even stop the print. Just turn it to the left as it's Okay. Turn the knob, turn it to the left, and you can leave it. It should be working. Just turn the adjustment knob on the bottom of the build area left. Okay. It looks like mine's not close enough either, so I'm going to do the exact same thing. Okay, and I'm going to do that on all of them. I'm going to adjust them by about a half turn. 
a little bit more than a half turn all the way around. And then it should, in theory, raise the entire build plate up, but not change the level of it. Okay, so now mine's laying down, is yours? Yes. My plastic is laying down now. And you can adjust it, you have some leeway once it starts to lay down. If it looks very circular, if it looks like this, there's only this section is laying down on the build area. So that's not super great. You want it to be more of a flat top and a flat bottom. So it almost looked like a, a thin rectangle or rectangular prism being laid down all the way around. That's the preferred look. That's something you'll just get used to over time. And you can kind of find your favorite spot. Usually once you level these, as long as you're not moving them from room to room all the time, they're pretty low. So is it okay for you? I, I think Josh is making a few minor corrections on it. Yeah, sure. Uh, just until your heart is content. That's how I do it. I will play with it until I'm either so tired of messing with it or that I finally hit that point. I'm like, this is perfect. It'll be great. All right. So there's my gear, the first layer of it. Lay down pretty nicely. Looks, looks well squished. It seems like it's going to print the next one just fine too. So I usually watch the entire first layer. So I know I have three here. So I have one here, one here, and one a little bit back. So I'm going to watch the printer until it finishes all of those. And then once I feel comfortable that it did all three of those right, I'm going to leave it and I'm going to let it print. The best method to ensure a print will finish is usually making sure that the first layer goes down well and sticks well. So the other technique, we have that soft pull, which I know you know about, Jared, you're good at that. So if you have filament problems, um, you have a cleaning tool. So there should be a small needle, which is a yeah. basic cleaner. And that's simple, you thread it through the nozzle itself. And then I like to do the pressure, basically just applying pressure in the back here to the trigger and pushing the filament through to clear out any small baby clogs or little burn areas or uh, old colors. Okay. Awesome. So how's it looking? Uh, so far, I think it looks pretty good. There's, well, there's a few segments in it where uh, we were adjusting it. That looks kind of a little bit yeah. odd, but. Sure. And I mean, at this point in time, it hasn't been printing long. So if you wanted to, you could hit stop print. You could scrape the build plate and restart it, and it would be on its way immediately to do if I don't like how it was leveled or it was a little too distant at the very start I will immediately stop it so just click the button and go stop print move my print head just go and then restart just like that and then it'll start by itself and it should start pretty much immediately because it's already preheated and ready to go Okay, so Josh said it looks pretty good what it's laying down right now, so. Awesome, that's good to hear. So another thing about the printer that you guys received, is that blue build lock surface that you're familiar with from the A5, and it's also flexible on this one. So that means that if you do unclip each area and pull the build plate off, you should still be able to flex the plate underneath it a glass layer, and then you'll have a flex plate, and then you have the blue layer that you look at. Right. So that blue layer is on the flex plate, and those are removable away from the glass. You should just be able to crack the build off to make it easier to remove prints. Yeah. I find that generally with the stuff that's large, you generally don't have to do that, but with stuff that's kind of short and fat, or like yeah. spot, yeah, that's when you start getting troubles with having to bend your build plate like that. Yeah, very much so. 
Awesome, guys. Well, that was that was quick and easy, huh? Yeah. I mean, I didn't expect uh, too much more than the Cura settings because this thing seems very similar to the A5s. It is like a larger. So, cool. Do you guys have any questions? Like any, do you want any tips or tricks? Do you have anything specific that's been happening with either your A5? Um, because the, they are very similar in nature, or maybe even your race 3D. Um, kinda, I'm kind of, I'm open. One of my, one of the A5s that we have is going down too far. Okay. Like when it homes, it goes down like way too far. Me. So I can show you how to change that. So probably what the issue is, is so I have my A5 here. Oh, camera's good. The issue most likely is going to be your Z L bracket. And that's going to be right here. This little yellow bracket here. Yeah. Right here, it supports the limit switch. So let me move this up. So if you notice this switch right here is supported by that L bracket. So right. the L bracket could have come loose a little bit and sunk down which is gonna cause it to keep going down until it hits that Z limit switch. So you can maybe move the L bracket up and it should look a lot like this. This bottom screw should have a gap at the top of it, which means okay. that it push as far up as it can be, right? And then you tighten each, each one down again. All right, we'll, we'll try that whenever. Uh... Okay, if that doesn't work, then what I recommend doing is bending this small metal piece you can actually take your finger and just put it right in the middle of it, and then you can just bend that up to create an angle for it to sit on, okay? That's okay. That you could do. So between one of those, I'm sure you'll end up getting it fixed, okay? All right. Cool. What else? Um, I think we're, I think we're good, right, Josh? Yeah. Awesome. It's, it's pretty simple stuff. I mean, yeah, in essence, it's pretty simple. You know, if you've worked with this kind of stuff before, it, it seems simple, but if you haven't, it's like voodoo, man. You know, half the time it is like, voodoo. like, yeah, the components are simple. That's how, that's how I looked at it when I first saw 3D printer. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. This really, I was like, all it is is a couple motors and like a tractor run on. And then it's all about really the design aspect is, is what it's about. And that's the most difficult part. We say, you know, once you have the settings, it's simple. The printer is basic components that you can utilize. And then the design aspect is definitely the hardest is how I learn. Okay. Awesome, gentlemen. Well, if you guys need anything, of course, we have our support page available. You can always go to the support and click request support. We are definitely here for you and we'd love to help. Uh, especially if anything acts up on the race 3D again. I know sometimes it can be a big monster that's amazing, but it can be finicky. So, okay. If it happens with the A31s or A5s, let us know and we'll try and help you out as much as we can. So. All right. Thank you very much. No problem, Josh uh, or Jared. Sorry. I appreciate it. Josh, it was nice meeting you. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Have a good one. Thank you.